I just got back from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and the tickets alone cost $400. The decision to buy those tickets was agonizing. How could I justify spending that much money? Before I went, I kept thinking about how prices are too high. But when I got there, I asked myself, are prices too low? Let me give you the classic economics argument for why prices are too low. Then I'm gonna to explain to you why that argument is wrong. But first, why was I even willing to pay $400 in the first place? This is my daughter and it's her birthday. I'm bringing her to Orlando for a fun filled weekend with her cousins. But she doesn't know that I'm also taking her to Harry Potter until now. Hey, I need you to eat breakfast because we're gonna go to Harry Potter. <laughs> now I'm waking her up because I have a plan. We're gonna get to the theme park early enough that I can get into the most popular ride, Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure, before there's a huge line that's gonna take two hours to get through. When I explain this to my daughter, she immediately sees a problem with my logic. She asks, what if everyone else has the same plan and there's still a line? We arrive an hour before the park officially opens and the first thing we get is lines. A line to show our tickets, a line to get into the park, and a line for our first show at Ollivander's wand shop. So from the time that we arrived until we had our first fun actual experience in the park, it took 100 minutes. And that was a huge letdown for my eight-year-old daughter. That ride for Hagrid's motorbike adventure, the line was here even though the park was over there. My daughter was right. She's a better economist than me. Get that girl a job at Gringotts. Usually whenever economists see lines, they think prices are too low. Here's an easy way to see that graphically. A roller coaster has a maximum capacity of how many riders can use it. So the supply of rides is inelastic at QS. Like a roller coaster, the demand for rides slopes down. And where it intersects with the supply curve tells us the price that clears the roller coaster market. That is at this price, the number of people who want a ride exactly equals the roller coaster's capacity. There are no lines. Lines occur when the quantity demanded is higher than the quantity supplied. And that happens when prices are lower than the market clearing price. Thus, by the fact that we see lines, we can argue that prices are too low. But this argument is wrong. In a normal market, when there are lines, only the customers who get the product pay for it. But here, everyone has already paid. They are paying to stand in lines. If prices are too low, Universal can just raise them. So why does Universal think this is the profit maximizing price? To understand this, we need to understand the principle of revealed preference. Suppose you have $5 and there are two things you can buy, bananas and chocolate. Each costs $1. With that $5, there are a couple of different ways for you to bundle bananas and chocolate. That means if you buy two bananas and three chocolates, that tells us something about yourself because you could have bought three bananas and two chocolates but you didn't. So you must prefer the bundle of two bananas and three chocolates to the bundle of three bananas and two chocolates. Your purchase has revealed something about your preferences. The principle of revealed preference is the principle that your choices tell us something about what you like and don't like. You like what you choose at least as much as any other bundle you could afford. So what does this tell us about the classical economics explanation and Universal's profit maximizing price? Let's go back to that moment where I was agonizing over buying this ticket. One ticket to Universal is $187 before taxes. But Universal also offers an express pass that lets you skip the long lines for an extra $100. I didn't have a $100 bill on hand for this video, so instead I used this $20 billion bill. But for those of you who have been to these theme parks, you know that it kind of feels the same. Anyway, this pass allows me to pay a higher ticket price to skip these lines. So like the bananas and chocolates, I had a choice. I could spend the money and get more rides or I could take fewer rides and keep my $100. And you already know what I chose. And it's not just me. The reason why those lines are so long is because most people prefer to stand in lines than pay an extra $100. So while this price doesn't clear the market, it does let Universal get more people in the park paying those ticket prices and therefore higher profits. So yes, ticket prices are low and we sit there and complain about the lines. But we've revealed to Universal that we would rather wait in those lines than pay higher prices. Of course, we don't actually save any money. We just use that money to spend on frozen butterbeer and butterbeer ice cream. If you're interested in more videos on the economics of Harry Potter, you should check out this video on a company that lost $125,000 betting on Harry Potter.